So I decided to go ahead and get solar for my house, which is something I've been thinking about for a while. Had some friends down the street who put solar on their house and I got talking to their installer and he really kind of rekindled the interest and uh, prompted me to go ahead and do some research about it and finally pulled the trigger. So we decided to go ahead and get Tesla as our installer and uh, that really came about after comparing some of the quotes that we got. In particular, one of the ones that we got was almost double the price that Tesla was asking for solar alone. So at the end of the day, we were able to add on the three power walls and in combination, those were about the same or a little bit less than the price of the system that a uh, regular so, uh, solar provider in the area was offering. They tend to want to also focus on the monthly outlay and uh, these PPA plans and things like that. That's not really something I want to really look at. I'm more interested in the total cost of the system and uh, how much value and power we're getting out of it. So I'm going to go ahead and document this process. Uh, we'll see what ends up happening and what lessons we learn along the way and hopefully it'll be useful to someone else who's maybe in the same situation or considering getting a Tesla system, uh, both power and, and solar. This is our house, which is uh, pretty new, built in, in late 2016. And uh, it's got a fair amount of, of roof surface area. Uh, some parts of it are pitched to the west. Most of it is pitched to the west. And then uh, some parts of it are pitched to the east, which you get morning sun. So the plan that the Tesla folks have sent over, I guess after evaluating over satellite, uh, looks like this. And they've got, let's see, uh, about 24 panels on the part of the roof that's pitched to the west, and then 12 panels on the sections of the house over our bedroom and the garage, uh, which are pitched to the east. So they'll, they'll get the morning sun, and then uh, the, the larger number of panels would get the, the presumably strong afternoon sun. Um, our roof is a, it's, it's a metal roof and uh, it's a standing seam roof. So I've been reading and doing a little bit of research about that and, and how they do installs. Cause most of the pictures that you see are these panels on comp, you know, composite uh, shingles. And so our roof's a little bit different than that. And um, it's got these these standing seams, and I understand that it's uh, partially ideal because it just means that they can they can clip the panels on to the the seams, uh, which means that they don't have to really put you know very many or any holes in the roof itself, which is kind of nice. Uh, but I guess aesthetically, we'll see how it goes. You know, Tesla's got these uh, skirting the skirting that goes around the sides of the solar panels to make them look like they're really low to the roof uh, and so that you can't really see under them. So I'm not sure how that'll look on a standing seam and if it'll sit a little bit higher or uh, if it won't look as good or look better, who knows. I, I've seen a, a few pictures online, uh, but the, not very many people have a standing seam roof um, that have posted you know, pictures of their, of their panel install. Uh, so we'll see how that goes. but. You know, when you approach the house from the front, you really don't actually see a lot of the roof. So it, it might actually be pretty hidden. Um, if you're if you're driving down the street and approach the house from that direction, you obviously see the the roof from that side or or from this side. And uh, I guess you'll you'll see the install from that direction. And we'll just have to. I think one of the questions in my mind is how good that'll look and whether the standing seam metal roof will make it look better or if it'll make it. Uh, not quite look as good. This is where my main electrical panel and meter is. And uh, this is also where the uh, power from the utility pole comes into the house. And uh, if I'm a betting man, this is probably the location that the installation guys are going to want to do all the work in. Um, but so far, the, the hardest thing of I've had to consider and start figuring out is where these power walls are actually going to go. Um, and there's a couple, couple different possibilities. So this is definitely one of them. Um, the thing that's concerning about this location is um, that this whole wall is, uh, what's on the other side of it is uh, bedrooms. So my son's bedroom, my daughter's bedroom, uh, the two bathrooms are over here. Um, and 
just reading on a couple of the forums and uh, and in the uh, spec sheet for the power walls, uh, it says that they do create some nominal amount of noise, it's kind of equivalent to a small refrigerator or something. So um, I've I've heard that some people have complained that you know they, they hear like a low hum. And so one thing it actually tells you to do is to consider the location of where you want to put these uh, and make sure that that's going to be okay. Um, so some, some folks have said that if you mount them on the wall, that maybe that transmits vibration a little bit more than uh, mounting them on the ground. But uh, one of the issues there is, um, so uh, we just had our backyard redone and we've got these pebbles and stone along the side here. So it's not really a great floor mounting surface. So if they're gonna go in this location, which there's plenty of room for them to do, and which will be really easy wiring wise, like this is probably the location that they're gonna wanna put them in. But of course I'm concerned about uh, any noise implications. I don't want anybody complaining that they can't sleep or anything like that because of hums. So anyway, that's, that's probably where some of the equipment will go. Like the gateway is probably gonna go here, I would guess. Um, or, you know, the inverters, the, this would be the logical place. Uh, but uh, I may have have to think of some other alternatives as well. So this is probably the second possible location, a little bit further down the house now. On the other side of this wall is, a, is another bathroom and a guest bedroom. So if there's a little bit of sound, then it's probably less of a problem over here. The other benefit of this is that it's got this solid concrete base here. Um, but all the way down the side of the house here, I mean, space is kind of a little bit of a premium. So they can, you know, the other thing is the, the configuration of how they put them or how they arrange them. And so one option is if you wall mount them, then you'll get one uh, hanging on the wall. Like if, it, if they were to put it here and hang it on the wall, you can put one that way. And the other option is you can, you can stack up to three of them um, and they take about six inches of depth. And I don't know if I want to really give up 18 inches of depth on the side of the house here, just because it's convenient to be able to, you know, wheel things down here um, if we're doing any projects in the backyard or anything like that. This step sticks out 12 inches, so uh, arguably you could do like a 2-1 arrangement on the floor. Um, and then the other alternative is maybe to just put three of them side by side on this wall and then if there is any humming or vibration it'll at worst affect you know guests who are staying with us or when we don't have guests i could you kids use this room as a game room so there's a lot of options to think about um if they if they floor mount them here it could work out pretty well but then these there's these vents as well it's kind of the um the crawl space venting um, so, you know, maybe we could do like two here and one here. I measured and if, if one was to go here, it would encroach a little bit on these vents, but I think that's probably not too much of a problem. So this is probably the second best location. Then the question becomes, well, how, you know, how are they going to run whatever wiring needs to happen, which I'm pretty sure is going to be a pretty heavy gauge wire uh, from this location all the way over to the electrical panel over there. So I assume that'll be either up around the perimeter here, um, or it'll, you know, they'll have to penetrate through to the crawl space and then go around the slab and then come out over there. So somebody will have to get into the crawl space access, which is actually in our bedroom. So I'll walk around the other side. You can maybe see some other options for places that, that we might end up putting them or other possibilities. So this is the other side of the house, and this is maybe one of the places that's in play for placing the power walls. And uh, of course, one of the uh, the great disadvantage to having anything over here is that in order to, to get the power walls over to this side, uh, it's clear across the house from where the main panel is. So they would have to run probably conduit through the crawl space uh, with a heavy gauge wire to, to get the, the stuff over here. Um, I've read some stuff online about, you know, them charging maybe a thousand dollars to do those, those kinds of jobs. 
Um, I think in context of the total cost of the system, that's that's probably not too much of a problem given given the overall expense. Uh, and I'd rather have them placed in the ideal location. So um, having to pay a little bit of money to do that is is not too much of a problem, but uh, definitely something to to consider. Uh, so this is this is when I was thinking about it. This was the the area that I thought of, and um, uh, it seems you know at first blush like it might be ideal, but of course there's this downspout spout here, which is kind of a problem in this this condensation tube from the uh, from the air handler inside. So there there is like 30 inches of space here, which is how much you need. Um, but, you know, obviously it would be super close, 18 inches out for three power walls, and it would be crowding the condenser, or sorry, the compressor over here, and uh, and then be close to this downspout, spout, which we wouldn't really want. So um, so that's one consideration. The, the next one that I've been thinking about is maybe this area over here. So, you know, we could move this bike rack out of the way and maybe place the power walls under this window and uh, put them together. They would come 18 inches out for three of them. And it seems like pretty, pretty ideal. This could work. What's on the other side of this is, um, is our master bathroom. And so that's, that's probably not too bad in terms of like any vibration or anything or humming coming through um, the walls. Uh, on the other side of that one over there is the kitchen. So, and you know, we've already got this compressor here, so, and some stuff that makes some noise. So that, that hasn't been too bothersome. So this could be another place possibly, but uh, one of the downsides, so it's it's late afternoon right now, so it's pretty shady back here. But for most of the day, this this is this wall is south facing. Um, so it gets, you know, there's these trees and stuff here which protects it a little bit, but it gets pretty hot, direct sun for most of the morning. So, uh, and I understand that uh, the power walls are fine with that, but you know, obviously, you know, non-direct sun right on those things is, is probably more ideal. So along here is, a, is another possibility. Uh, of course, we run into the same problem with the, the stone and pebbles here, not really creating a solid footing if we want to mount it on the ground so that would be ha have to be addressed and you could mount them on the walls here but on what's on the other side of this wall is our master bedroom so uh, that's probably the most sensitive to to sound especially since we hear some we hear some humming from our like our neighbor's hot tub at night um, which is a little bit annoying but but not bothersome enough for us to do anything about um, so the last place that, that may be a possibility is over here by our, where we usually keep our trash cans. So, you know, this is the garage on the other side of this wall. And um, maybe maybe this might be an okay location or any place along this wall. Uh, would just be kind of annoying to, you know, have to rearrange these to make space. Um, and of course, here's the, the, the main gas pipe and line that comes into the house and the gas meter so this you know is probably a proximity issue with keeping a high power electrical equipment within some distance of this that that needs to be considered so um but you know that's uh maybe a possibility uh is is one of these areas as well so i think you know realistic candidates are probably that wall over there um, or over here as, uh, as possibilities for, for putting the power walls. And of course they would have to run that conduit, probably penetrate, come out here, you know, run conduit all across up into this area to, to reach these areas. And, um, I imagine that's not a small job. So that's something to be considered as well. Okay. So our garage is probably the, the last place, um, that I've been thinking about as well. And usually what it sounds like is usually Tesla prefers if they can to place the power walls in, in indoors in a sort of semi-controlled space like a garage. So um, I'd love to put it in here if possible. Um, this sort of has the same problem as the, some of the outdoor spaces on the other side of the house where 
you know, this it's gonna have to be a pretty long run to, to get the, the power walls over here, um, or at least, you know, to the electrical, uh, the main electrical panel. There's an electrical sub-panel back here um, that's a 100 amp circuit that runs from the main panel already, and the, uh, the car chargers on that. Um, but uh, I think they're, they'd have to run a new one in order to install the power walls over here. So this is probably the first spot that, that makes sense is up here by the front of the cars, um, or on, on this side of the garage. So there's, there's a good amount of depth over here that could probably handle it um, if, we, if we put them here. The thing that, that stinks about this area uh, a little bit is that there's this ledge um, on the, uh, at the base of the wall here. So immediately we'd have to mount the power walls out a little bit if we wanted to put them on the concrete floor um, in order to, to put all three together. So um, that's a little bit of a, a downside of that. And then what I've seen pictures online of people doing is, um, you know, putting them on the floor in a situation like this and then, and then maybe putting a, you know, two by six or two by four or something on the wall uh, and attaching that, that the, the power wall can then be attached to just to give it stability. So um, of the spots in the garage, I think this is like my preference of where where it would be good to, to place them. Um, there's a couple other possibilities as well. So one is, is maybe on this side. This has less depth, um, so there's less space here. And this is, you know, my wife gets out of her car on this side of the of the um of the garage and you know as these tubes are neatly demonstrating having any more stuff over here is kind of a pain just to get stuff out of the trunk or um, just to generally get in, in and out of this area so these california garages are a little bit narrow <laughs> sometimes so it's hard to squeeze cars in here anyway um so i don't want to make life more difficult by putting more more stuff in the way here but um and then of course, it would be easy to to put stuff on the wall if I had space on the walls. Um, like, I could imagine three power walls out over there would actually look pretty awesome um, and not take up too much room. But but we use all this all this wall space um, for storage because because uh, in this yeah you know, it's a pretty modern home, um, but it has no basement and no attic, <laughs> so there's no attic space in this whole place, and so we have to make pretty good use of the wall space that we have, especially in the garage. So I've, or, I've put cabinets up and um, we store a lot of things over here. And uh, so I'd have to either take some of that stuff down or give up some of the space in order to, um, you know, give up the wall space um, needed to, to mount power walls on the wall. This would be the obvious location to do that, but you know, some of our gardening tools and other things are over here as well but so I, I really think this is probably the spot to do it um i care a little less about um you know encroaching on this space because it wouldn't be too much i think there's probably you know two feet or more space here depth wise so uh, 18 inches is probably okay so and then the last spot i've been thinking of was was maybe over here under the electrical sub panel um so I think I think the the power wall needs about forty six inches, and I think this only goes to maybe uh, forty two or something. So that's kind of a problem, um, which you could squeeze something in over here. But um, you know, there's a there's a gas a gas line here again. Uh, this giant grounding wire you could probably move that, and then the cutoff switch uh, for the uh, the heating. Uh, air handler, so yeah, it's probably probably not going to work out here either. Um, and then, lastly, over here, you know, this is this is maybe a spot, but uh, there's way too much stuff over here. This this water filter for the tankless water heater. Um, this moving this cabinet might be a possibility as well. Um, so the upside of putting it in the garage is, you know, a semi-controlled environment. Definitely wouldn't be any noise issues. Um, and it would be protected, but the downside is the long run and then just where to put it and how much space it's going to take up. So we'll have to just look at all of this and figure it out. Um, my understanding 
from the paperwork that Tesla sent over is that we'll have to uh, basically have a chat with the, the lead installer person, whoever that might be, and come to an agreement of where this this thing needs to go and, and sort of a, a mixture of my preference and you know what the requirements are uh, for uh, for distance from the panel and, and that kind of thing. So uh, that's kind of top of my list of things that need to get figured out and sorted out. Well, I wanted to give you guys a look at what uh, the Tesla website looks like under my account after making this order. So um, you can see it's appeared here and um, I've done everything that they've asked me to do right after I placed the order, which required a um, hundred dollar deposit. They uh, asked me for an assessment of uh, my house and kind of walked me through that using the, the mobile app. Um, or I guess it wasn't a mobile app. It was, it was like mobile Safari uh, on my iPhone and uh, took a bunch of pictures of, uh, panels, uh, you know, the, the general area around the power meter, uh, stickers on, um, things like the, the AC unit and, uh, a couple of other things. And I uploaded those, sent those to them. And then within 24 hours, I actually woke up the, the next morning and they had, uh, this uh, plan that they they dropped into uh, my my documents for me to look at uh, and and kind of observe and uh, evaluate so this is where they showed me the layout of the roof panels um, as well as the kinds of inverters that they plan on using um, basically they just seem to attach the cut sheets for these different various pieces um, so we see the inverters here, which seem like they, you know, I don't know a whole lot about this technology, um, but from the little bit of researching that I did, it's, it seems like these are pretty, pretty decent inverters. So um, that's good. Uh, and then uh, what kind of panels they plan to use as well, which are these uh, Q-Cells, uh, Q-Peak Duo Black uh, solar panels, um, which seem like they're pretty good from the research that I've done. Uh, I was reading a bit of stuff about how the balance between the Panasonic panels and the Q-Cells panel, panels that, uh, that Tesla's using, it seems like they've leaned into these pretty heavily to possibly to achieve that, that 149 uh, cost, uh, you know, dollars per watt cost that they were going for. Um, so th this is what I got. They seem to be pretty high tech as well and uh, and, and uh, r relatively new from the research that I've done and uh, and pretty efficient. So maybe not the most efficient that you can get, but um, but seem to be on balance pretty good. So um, we'll see how they work out. But uh, it seems like it's all pretty pretty good stuff. And that was one of the things that, uh, the competitors kind of pointed out to me, um, you know, the difference between their install and a Tesla install. Um, there was some speculation about the efficiency of the system and whether Tesla's stuff was, was going to be as efficient as the equipment that they were offering. Um, I, I looked into that and, and it seemed like they were relatively comparable in terms of the panels that they were going to use. Um, and so, yeah, I... I don't think there was a whole lot to that. The other big difference is um, the use of uh, string inverters instead of the micro inverters that actually go under the each individual panel. Um, and in researching that, I kind of came to the conclusion that that wasn't really necessary for my house. Um, and particularly because we just don't really have any shade issues. Uh, which would require like independent control over each of the different um, solar panels. And in addition, uh, these inverters seem to have the facility to be able to um, get hooked up with, uh, with power optimizers, which is uh, apparently an, an answer to that uh, in kind of the string inverter world. So um, once again, I don't know a whole lot about this individual you know, product, but uh, we'll be interested to learn more. So that's pretty much the story um, as of now. Um, this is as far as I've gotten. And um, you, know, you can see here that the next stage is um, 
since I've done all the all the stuff that I need to do on my side, um, I think the next thing that I need to do is basically uh, go and get a permit to do this work from the city of Sunnyvale. So I understand that that's a pretty quick turnaround. Usually um, might be a little bit different right now with everything that's going on in the world and um, with uh, with COVID and, and and you know I don't know how that affects turnaround times, but. Um, We'll see how this goes and, and if they manage to turn that around pretty quickly. And then uh, at that point, I'll be waiting for an installation date. And it seems as though they tend to empower their uh, installation or their install leaders to, to make some decisions about how things work. So I'll be looking forward to talking with that person when it happens. Anyhow, uh, thank you guys for watching. And I hope this is helpful as I start on this adventure and uh, we'll, I'll give you an update next time it makes sense and, and something happens. And uh, in the meantime, thanks for watching.